Matthias Kuhlman, welcome back to Breaking Politics. Good to be back. Nice to have you in. You no doubt watched last night's uh, debate. I did. How did you feel when Tony Abbott said to the Prime Minister, does this guy ever shut up? Well, I think that Tony Abbott uh, asked a question that all of us uh, in front of the uh, television screens were asking ourselves. In fact, uh, I tweeted just before uh, Tony Abbott uh, asked that question, I, I tweeted whether Mr Rudd remembered that this was supposed to be a people's forum and an opportunity for the people to ask the question and that it wasn't all about Mr Rudd, that it was actually about uh, the people in the audience. And, and, and so I, I have got, uh, uh, I, I totally agree with the sentiment that uh, Tony Abbott expressed in that question. What about the point where Kevin Rudd said of your paid parental leave scheme, hands up in the room any women who are earning uh, $150,000? Now, it was a cheeky question. He knew the answer he was going to mm. get. He yeah. knew exactly what he was doing. But it still made a valid point, didn't it, that the, that the paid parental leave scheme you're offering is pitched uh, partly at some very wealthy people. Well, I mean, he confirmed the point that we've been making for some time. Whenever uh, Labor is trying to dishonestly assert that our paid parental leave scheme will benefit uh, the rich, that's not true, because only 1.7% uh, of women uh, in the age bracket between 18 and 49 uh, years of age uh, earns more than $100,000. Overwhelmingly, our paid parental leave scheme uh, will provide uh, better benefit, more appropriate benefits uh, for low and middle income earners. A woman on the minimum wage uh, will be 5000 dollars better off uh, under our scheme compared to Labor's, uh, and uh, a woman on an average wage uh, would be uh, $21,000 better off. And, and of course, I mean, this is, this is a scheme which is, and I, I repeat it again, an important economic reform, and it is also a scheme which helps families uh, deal with cost of living pressures. So you say the absence of hands in the audience actually argues your case? Absolutely. And I mean, it is, it is something that we've actually pointed out uh, in, in our policy. OK. Um, the $70 billion in cuts that Labor says the coalition is pledged to make. There it, are no $70 billion worth of cuts. It is one of the many Labor lies in this campaign. Is that figure a myth? Uh, the figure is a lie. And I mean, again, I mean, I say what I've said on your program before. Uh, we, we've had uh, independent uh, verification from uh, political fact checkers, including uh, the political fact here at uh, the Sydney Morning Herald, Fairfax, uh, which uh, has clearly pointed out that that assertion is false. Uh, the Labor Party keeps repeating it because they clearly think that if you repeat a lie often enough, that someone uh, somewhere along the way uh, is going to believe it. But it's not true. Except that the Labor Party can quote Joe Hockey and Andrew Robb back in 2011, so quite a while ago, but nominating themselves the $70 billion figure as a target for well, cuts. That, that is not quite right. I mean, they're, they're taking a uh, figure that is completely unrelated to anything to do uh, with cuts, completely out of context. And, and I mean, since, since then, incidentally, I mean, let's just remember over the last two years, uh, the budget bottom line under Labor has deteriorated. Uh, by more than $107 billion. I mean, if you look at what Labor told us in their economic statement before the last election and what has actually happened uh, since then, uh, the budget, deter uh, budget position has deteriorated by about $100 billion. But just in the two years since the May 2011 budget, uh, Labor has made errors uh, in their costings, in their budget predictions to the tune of more than $100 billion. Labor cannot get their own figures right. Why would anyone trust them with our numbers? OK, but Labor's bad performance, as you call it, shouldn't be the benchmark for your performance. Uh, the $70 billion figure is wrong then. What's the right one? Well, I mean, what we're doing is... Uh exactly as I've uh, explained to you and your, your viewers before, uh, we're going through a proper structured methodical uh, process, unlike the Labor Party. The way you get your numbers right is by doing, going through the process right. Uh, and so what we've, what we've done for some time uh, through the uh, Shadow Expenditure Review Committee is go through the budget line by line, identify opportunities to cut Labor waste. Uh, we've already announced about $17 billion worth of savings. Uh, in this campaign, uh, we had the uh, economic statement and we had the pre-election economic fiscal outlook come out. Uh, we are reviewing that carefully. We are, we are announcing policy. And unlike the Labor Party, every single one of our policies has got a cost and information about the cost of that policy attached in the policy document. Now, obviously, as we go through this campaign, as we get uh, closer uh, to the end of this campaign, and we've released all of our uh, policies, and in good time before the next election, we will be releasing 
a complete and detailed list of all of our policies and their cost, of all of our savings measures and their value, uh, and people will be able to say that as a result of our policies and our savings, the budget will be better off under the coalition uh, than under Labor. Six years in opposition, we're two weeks and two yeah. days before the election, and you still won't yeah. nominate a final figure to replace that $70 billion. I well, mean, if $70 billion is wrong, what's right? Well, I mean, Tim, <laughs> again, the budget position under Labor deteriorated by $33 billion in the 11 yes, weeks from the May not budget. Your benchmark, well, well, no, but, yeah, but sure. But, but we are dealing with figures that are put in front of us by the government. And in the 11 weeks from the budget to the economic statement, the budget bottom line deteriorated by $33 billion, about $3 billion a week. So of course we've got to take all of that into account. Of course we've got to work our way uh, through the implications of all of that. So uh, volatility prevents you from coming well, up no, with it, a number? It, but obviously, a, a commitment a commitment to proper process, a commitment to getting it absolutely right, a commitment to make sure uh, that when we release our costings, uh, the full cost of all of our policies, the full value of all of our savings, uh, people can have confidence uh, that what they see uh, is accurate. And of course, not only have we gone through a rigorous and robust process uh, through the Parliamentary Budget Office, uh, we've also established uh, an independent uh, panel of experts with uh, people like uh, the former uh, Secretary of the Prime Minister's uh, Department, Peter Shergold, uh, involved to provide independent verification and sign-off that we have followed proper process with integrity and that our costings are right. OK. No replacement number yet for the $70 billion. It's wrong, but we haven't got a replacement number yet. Um, you say to us that each policy is costed along the way. Paid parental leave. The costings? How are you going to pay for it? Well, the pay parental leave is a very good example. There in the policy it says very clearly uh, that the net additional cost from our scheme over the Ford estimates is $6.1 billion. Uh, we have very clearly uh, laid out how that is going to be funded. But you haven't told us where that money is coming from to pay the $6.1 billion. Well, we, we have. I mean, I mean the six, the $6.1 billion additional net cost overwhelmingly uh, comes from uh, the uh, pay parental leave levy on Australia's uh, 3,000 largest companies. Over 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 overwhelmingly. Well, well, I, I, know, I, know what you're getting, I know what you're getting at. Beyond the forward estimates, uh, the full year cost of the pay parental leave scheme uh, is uh, estimated at about $5.5 billion a year. Uh, and about half uh, of that ongoing cost beyond the forward estimates uh, will come from the pay parental leave levy. And then, of course, beyond that, as we have said transparently in our policy document, uh, the remainder will come uh, from discontinuing Labor's current uh, inferior pay parental leave scheme. There's a significant saving that comes from that. It will come from uh, not allowing public servants out of Canberra, for example, to double dip as they currently are by accessing not one but two fully taxpayer-funded pay parental leave schemes, one on top of the other, uh, and by making a series of consequential uh, savings as a result of uh, implementing a more uh, generous and more appropriate fair income pay parental leave scheme. Now, okay. the important point here is there will be no cuts uh, to any other services in order to fund uh, the important economic reform, which is our fair income pay parental leave scheme. No other cuts. No, will no cover cuts. Six point one billion. No cuts to uh, any other services to help fund our fair income pay parental leave scheme whatsoever. This is just uh, another dishonest negative labour scare campaign. They haven't got anything to talk about in terms of their record. They haven't got anything to talk about in terms of their future plans. So Kevin Rudd is out there spending 99% of his time attacking Tony Abbott personally and spreading lies. Kev it's quite sad really to see a Prime Minister so desperate uh, that all he can resort to uh, in this campaign is spreading lies. Kevin Rudd has told The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald that if he is re-elected he will alter the Commonwealth uh, Electoral Act to completely ban tobacco sponsorship of political parties. Is he right? Well, I mean, this is, I mean, this is just uh, Kevin Rudd, the hypocrite. I mean, Kevin Rudd is the guy that took uh, tobacco uh, money for, for, you know, to fund his uh, various uh, trips overseas. I mean, Did uh, he? like, well, <laughs> ask, ask him. You should ask him the question. Kevin Rudd, can you confirm that you took money from Big Tobacco uh, for your trip to Germany last year? Uh, I mean, let, let's, let's see what he says. Uh, what, do you know the answer? Well, the answer is that yes, he did. Uh, how much? I mean, and from whom? Well, you know, look, I mean, go, go and ask him. Go and ask him the details. Kevin Rudd 
took money from Big Tobacco uh, to fund uh, one of his, well, at least one of his many trips overseas. He's a complete hypocrite on this. OK, um, but again, Kevin Rudd shouldn't be your benchmark, I'm sure, for what's right and what's wrong. Has he at least but, got a point, hypocritical maybe, but got a point that... Uh, we shouldn't have political parties funded by tobacco. Well, our, our record is there for all to see. We, we are committed uh, to uh, strong preventative health measures. We are committed uh, to bringing down uh, the uh, incidence of smoking. Tony Abbott personally, as health minister, has got a very uh, strong record in this uh, policy area. Uh, but we, we're not going to get sucked in uh, to uh, Labor's uh, desperate uh, games, which are, as I said, quite hypocritical in this light stage of the campaign. We'll stick to our plan for stronger economy, uh, for more jobs, uh, for helping people with their cost of living pressures. We're not going to get distracted uh, by uh, Kevin Rudd's little side shows will stick, uh, will remain focused on the main game. And you'll keep taking money from tobacco companies. Well, as I said, to, I mean, this, is, well, this, is, this, is just, this is just a Labor sideshow. I mean, like... I'll take that as a yes. Well, you can take that whatever well, way well, you want. Well, you're, but, not, you're either are or well, you're not no, going but, to. Well, I mean, you, you can take that whatever way you want. I mean, like Kevin Rudd is clearly not focused on the issues that matter to the Australian people. What matters to the Australian people is to make sure uh, that our economy grows more strongly again, that we uh, create more jobs, uh, that people get help with their cost of living pressure that we do something about the significant uh, transport issues in, in, in places like uh, New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia. I mean, Ke Kevin Rudd is just running a desperate campaign. We're not going to get sidetracked by Kevin Rudd. Perhaps the way to close this, uh, indeed the interview, but certainly this issue is to ask it this way. Kevin Rudd aside, is it right for political parties to accept donations from tobacco companies? Well, political parties accept donation, donations from a wide variety of uh, businesses and companies and, uh, and individual Australians uh, right across the board. Uh, I mean, the Labor Party gets uh, significant uh, funding from the union movement. I mean, is it right uh, that uh, Kevin Rudd takes money from the Health Services Union, uh, which uh, you know cl clearly has For been all spending. For they don't uh, cause cancer. Which, which, well, <laughs> which, 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 which has been spending uh, their members' uh, money, money from their lowly paid members, uh, on uh, services. Uh, you know, paying for prostitutes. I mean, like, what, what is what is Kevin Rudd doing? Taking money from the unions uh, that, that are quite frankly getting involved in this sort of activity. Matthias Corman, as always, a lively discussion. Thank you for coming to Breaking Politics. Always good to be here.